Hello and welcome to another video by Geek Together. Today we'll be continuing our CrowdSec installation series and I'll be showing you how to install CrowdSec on a Windows 10 or Windows Server machine. This information is the same for any Windows operating system you're using. So just stay tuned and I'll show you how you can install CrowdSec on a Windows system. So obviously the first thing you want to do is remote desktop or connect to your Windows system in this case i'm using a kali linux machine and i'm going to connect to my windows server machine using remote desktop so i'm going to log in as administrator and once you're all logged in i'm going to open my browser here and there's two things we have to download so the first thing is we have to download the crowdsec security engine which we can download this crowdsec security engine by following the link i have in the description section below so the description section is going to include the crowdsec security engine download link and the crowdsec windows firewall bouncer download link as well so for the crowdsec security engine you can download the msi file here and for the crowdsec windows firewall bouncer you're going to have to download the cs windows firewall installer bundle exe file the reason i recommend you download the bundle is because in order for you to use the crowdsec bouncer it requires microsoft net framework so if you already have the microsoft net framework installed in your windows system you can go ahead and just download the cs windows firewall bouncer setup msi but to be safe, I will say you should go ahead and download the bundle.exe because that's a package that has the CrowdSec firewall bouncer and the .NET framework that you need to work with this program. So now that you have that downloaded, as you can see, I have both of those downloaded. I'm going to start by installing CrowdSec. All you need to do is double click on the MSI file and you go next and wait for the installation to complete. And once the installation is complete, we're going to select finish. And then we're going to go ahead and install the CS or CrowdSec firewall bouncer. So we're going to select install. And as you can see, it starts by installing the net framework, which is why I advised for you to download the bundle. And once the net framework installation is complete, now we're going to, it's going to ask us to complete the CrowdSec Windows Firewall Bouncer. So now that the installation is complete, we're going to head over and open our command line by heading over to the start menu and then look for command prompt. And so once you have command prompt open, we're going to run a simple command to make sure that our CrowdSec was installed successfully. So we'll start by running the command CSCLI metrics. And if you don't get any error and you get a similar um, information on your command line, that means you've successfully installed the CrowdSec security engine and the CrowdSec Windows Firewall Bouncer. So now that we have our CrowdSec installed and we've also installed our Windows Firewall Bouncer, we need to go ahead and configure our CrowdSec's Windows Firewall Bouncer. So in order for us to do this, we're going to head over to this PC and we're going to go to local disk. You want to open up program files, CrowdSec, and then in bouncers. Sometimes when the installation completes, you should have a .yml file in here or yaml file. So if we look at the CrowdSec documentation for the Windows Firewall Bouncer, we should have a Windows Firewall Bouncer.yaml file. I notice that sometimes, especially with Windows Server versions, after you're done installing the Windows Firewall Bouncer, you do not get that file added in here. Because if we look in here, we do not see any um, YAML file in here. So you can create yours. So you can just right click and you can create a new file and we'll just create the text file and then we're going to name this text file cs windows firewall bouncer.yaml so we'll rename this file and once you have that done now we're going to open this file and we're going to paste our firewall bouncers configuration in here so we'll just copy this and we'll paste it into that file. 
So before we continue, I'm going to explain to you what this configuration are. So the two things you need to worry about in here is the API key and your firewall profiles. So first of all, we're going to have to create a firewall bouncer API key and add it in this file. And we're going to have to add some more firewall profiles in here. Windows firewall has three kinds of profiles. It has the domain profile, it has the private profile, and it has the public profile. So I'm not going to go too deep into the profiles because that's way above the scope of this video. But you can set CrowdSec to block for all of the profiles or for a specific profile. So for this video, we're just going to make um, our CrowdSec to block for every profile. So I'm going to include private and then I'm going to include public as well. So once you have that done, we're going to head over to our command prompt and we're going to run the command CSCLI bouncers add and then we'll give the name of the bouncer. So in our case, we're just going to call this firewall. And once that's done, we're going to copy the API key. Of course, you want to save this somewhere should in case you lose it. But in this case, you can't lose it because we're adding it to this file. So we'll paste that in here. And once we have that pasted, we're going to save this file. And then you want to open services for Windows. So we're going to search for services, open services. And there's two services you want to restart. You want to start by restarting um, the CrowdSec Windows Firewall Bouncer. So we're going to restart that service. And once that's done, we're also going to restart CrowdSec. So once you restart CrowdSec, if we go to the Windows Defender Firewall Advanced Security and we go to Inbound Rules, you can see here that a whole bunch of rules have been added for our CrowdSec security. So, so CrowdSec in Windows is going to protect our Windows server from malicious attempts. So in this case, if you were using RDP or remote desktop, if you had your Windows server or Windows machine exposed to the internet over port 3389, which is RDP protocol, which I don't advise you to do it. But if you were doing that, CrowdSec can help you protect your server from like brute force attacks and so forth. So now that we have this completed, I'm going to close this. And now the next thing we're going to do is actually test if our firewall bouncer works. For this, I'm going to exit our remote desktop session. So now that we have that all set up, we're going to use a tool in Kali Linux called the Crowbar tool to simulate a remote desktop brute force attack on our Windows Server virtual machine that we're trying to protect with CrowdSec. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to paste the command here. So this crowbar command is going to run a brute force attack to the IP address of um, our Windows virtual machine using the protocol RDP. And we're going to try to brute force the administrator user account with a password list that we have. Actually, before we test that, I'm going to show you the IP address of my Kali Linux machine. So here the IP address is 10.100.10.169. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and run that command. So I have the command pasted and I'm going to press enter. So we'll run that one more time. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to test and make sure that CrowdSec actually works and see if our IP address is going to be blocked from accessing remote desktop once we start conducting this brute force attempt. So CrowdSec is going to detect a brute force attempt and is going to block us from being able to access RDP even if we have a valid username and password. So if I open another tab now, and I try to access remote desktop again to that machine. You can see we are unable to access remote desktop. At this time, my Kali Linux machine is unable to connect to that machine. So if I head over to the browser and I log on to and I log on to my VMware ESXi server, let's try to sign in into this uh, Windows Server machine. 
so i'm going to enter my password here as you can see once we're signed in if i run the command cscli decisions list you can see that uh, my ip address which is the 10.100.10.169 has been banned from accessing this machine and they're going to be banned for about four hours so if i run the command again cscli decisions or delete i followed by my ip address of my kali linux machine okay we can see that we've deleted our ip address from being banned so if i head back over to my kali linux machine and i try to use remote desktop again now you can see we're able to access that windows server machine again using our kali linux server so now that we can see that we've successfully been able to test our crowdsec on windows installation by uh, conducting a remote desktop brute force attack and we got blocked and we were able to unblock ourselves using the cscli command this brings us to the end of this video if you have any questions about your installation of crowdsec on a windows machine you can either leave it down in the comment section below or you can head over to our geek together hub and post a topic or a question so that i can help you resolve the issue on your windows system as always please do not forget to like the video and also subscribe to the channel